For all the success and spin put on the Apollo moon missions in the late 1960s, NASA has never fully answered the question, why have they never returned to the moon? Some ex-NASA employees know the answer, and that is that the moon is crawling with aliens. and that NASA astronauts confirmed this in the 1970s, leading many UFO researchers to conclude that NASA had been warned off ever returning to the lunar surface. UFO activity on the moon was nothing new to the ex-Nazis who engineered the Apollo moon missions. For centuries, astronomers all over the world including Nazi Germany, had been reporting UFOs flying over the lunar surface. The Lunar Anomalies Report was commissioned by NASA in the years preceding the famous Apollo missions in the late 1960s. For more than three years, NASA financed several research scientists to collate a catalogue of anomalous lights which had been reported on the lunar surface by leading astronomers and scientists since the Elizabethan era. In 1968, the public version of the NASA research was published under the title Document R277. This public version of NASA's survey of lunar UFOs included nearly 600 strange events which took place between the years 1540 and 1967. This official NASA catalogue of strange lunar UFOs included reports from some of the world's most famous astronomers. For example, NASA included a report from the brilliant French astronomer Jean Cassini, who reported seeing a white cloud hovering over the lunar surface in 1671. Another report suggested that the moon had an atmosphere when two astronomers reported lightning above the lunar surface on May the 18th, 1787. Just one month before, in the same year, 1787, the man who discovered Uranus, one of the pioneers of modern astronomy, Sir Frederick William Herschel, claimed to have observed several bright lights traversing across the lunar surface. Small luminous orbs of light, commonly referred to as luminosities, have been reported on more than 200 occasions. In February 1877, a streak of white light was observed for more than one hour. On April the 23rd, 1915, a beam of light was seen inside the Clavius crater. One of the UFO hotspots on the lunar surface is the Plato crater, where literally dozens of luminous orbs of light have been reported by astronomers. In addition to luminous UFOs on the lunar surface, NASA recorded the existence of mysterious shadows. In 1882, near the Aristotle area of the lunar surface, several dark shadows were seen. On September the 13th, 1959, astronomers were unable to photograph the lithro area of the lunar surface due to a large dark mass obscuring the terrain. And on September the 11th, 1967, Canadian astronomers reported a black cloud with violet edges floating across the Sea of Tranquility, the exact area chosen by NASA for the first Apollo moon landing in 1969.
Previous to the publication of the anomalous lunar report, in 1965, NASA launched Operation Moonblink, a project involving top observatories all over planet Earth. NASA's goal was to collect data on the large number of luminosities seen flying over the lunar surface. Operation Moonblink also investigated various large structures which had been photographed by unmanned NASA satellites. Some of these structures looked suspiciously artificial. In 1953, the science editor of the New York Herald Tribune had reported seeing a 12 mile long structure, possibly a bridge, on the edge of the Mare Crisium crater. This structure could have been caused by volcanic activity. British astronomers Dr. H.P. Wilkins and the presenter of the world's longest running TV series, The Sky at Night, Sir Patrick Moore, both confessed that the so-called bridge in the Mare Crisium crater had just popped up from nowhere. In preparation for the NASA Apollo moon missions, Orbiter 3 was dispatched to take photographs of some of the moon's most interesting structures. In the Eukert area of the moon, a large vertical structure stands proud of the lunar surface. It has been nicknamed the Shard. Another curious object photographed by Orbiter 3 is the so-called Tower, which some astronomers claim is over a mile thick and could be five miles high. After looking carefully through hundreds of NASA photos returned to Earth by Orbiter 3 and its predecessor, Orbiter 2, American author George Leonard published a book called Somebody Else is on the Moon. George Leonard presented many photos in his book, some showing very long tracks in the lunar dust. Tracks which he said had been made by aliens. Sightings of UFOs flying across the lunar surface are still going on to this day. In Japan, amateur astronomers have videotaped spherical luminosities using Celestron telescopes.
NASA's investment in studying UFOs on the moon was money well spent. Two ex-NASA mission specialists exposed in the 1970s that NASA astronauts had informed mission control that they had seen alien spaceships on the lunar surface. In 1976, an ex-NASA employee, Otto Bender, accused NASA of censoring transmissions from the Apollo astronauts by switching to secret radio frequencies and using code names for UFOs. Otto Binder claimed that he had heard an Apollo astronaut tell Mission Control that there were huge alien spaceships parked on the lunar surface, right in the middle of the Sea of Tranquility, which had been chosen as the landing site for Apollo 11. Few people took Otto Binder's account seriously, until another ex-NASA employee, a Moroccan named Maurice Chatelain, published a book in 1978 in which he claimed that two UFOs hovered above the Sea of Tranquility just before the historic moonwalk of Neil Armstrong. Maurice Chatelain was a NASA insider. He invented many of the radio and radar communication systems for the Apollo missions. He had 11 patents awarded for his inventions and had a high-level NASA security clearance, able to talk freely with senior NASA officials. In his book, he quoted radio transmissions between Apollo astronauts and mission control. According to Maurice Chatelain, the astronauts informed NASA that there were alien spacecraft lined up on the far side of a nearby crater, observing the historic moonwalk of Neil Armstrong. During his time working on the Apollo space program, Chatelain learnt that aliens not only exist, but that they have had a major role in shaping and in some cases destroying civilization. The title of Maurice Chatelain's book proves he was in no doubt that aliens had invaded planet Earth in the past. If you study the legends of the North American shamans, the mythologies of ancient Europe, the creation histories of the Australian Aborigines, or the ancient Vedic texts of India, and especially the Sumerian clay tablets from ancient Iraq, we find that all great civilizations on the face of planet Earth tell one similar story. That is, in the distant past, people from the stars visited planet Earth and displayed fantastic technology. Sometimes they genetically engineered humans. Sometimes they directly interbred with humans. These so-called sky gods always visited in spectacular flying vehicles. And the watchers from the sky saw the daughter of men were beautiful. 
and they bread with them. And the children who are giants who become rulers, not of human flesh. They were called the Nephilim. The most ancient written texts on planet Earth date from the Indus Valley and make up a corpus of works called the Vedas. The Bhagavad Gita is an ancient Hindu text which is at least 5,000 years old. This epic mythology inspired the character known as Darth Vader in the Star Wars movies. The Bhagavad Gita described many gods of the stars flying down to planet Earth in alien spacecraft called Virmanas. The ancient Vedas tell us that there are multiple inhabited planetary systems in the universe called Devas, which are ruled by a universal government of beings with superhuman powers and technology, including the power of telepathy and nuclear weapons powerful enough to destroy an entire planet. The Hindu legends tell us that the Virmanas were like flying saucers which had stealth technology, able to make themselves invisible and were able to detect enemy craft at great distances using a form of psychometric radar. The most ancient text of Central America is the Popol Vuh, written by the Mayans who charted the heavens and had astronomical calendars which predicted solar and lunar eclipses. The Popol Vuh describes the ancestors of the Mayans as great explorers who knew centuries before European scientists that the earth was not flat but in actual fact a sphere. The Popol Vuh mentions a great god king called Quetzalcoatl, who is depicted as a flying serpent. On more than three different occasions, in broad daylight, people have filmed flying serpents in the skies above Mexico. The same phenomena has also been filmed in Scotland, and also from aboard the space shuttle by veteran astronaut Story Musgrave.
these flying serpents have often been seen surrounded by spherical UFOs which are often metallic in appearance. Mexican UFO investigators call these spherical luminosities Las Perlas or the Pearls. These pearls of the sky are mentioned in ancient Tibetan scriptures. More than one leading Tibetan author suspects that these spherical UFOs are actually alien probes monitoring the evolution of mankind. These small spherical UFOs, which are the most common type of UFO filmed in the skies worldwide, are described in the ancient Buddhist text known as the Kantua. The Kantua describes the exact same spherical UFO phenomena which has been filmed in the skies above London, in Scotland, the south of France, and also many times in Mexico. According to self-styled Tibetan mystic and British author Cyril Hoskin, Tibetan Lama Mingya Donga told disciples that a group of Tibetan Lamas had established communication with space gods who said that they were watching Earth in the same way as humans watch animals in a zoo. A royal document dating back to the 7th century states that the first seven Tibetan kings came from the stars. <laughs> 